Hi, today we're discussing the last chapter in your textbook um, and it's chapter 22 and it's about humans and the impact that they have on our environments. So I'm not going to run through this chapter as I normally do by going through it section by section because I think this is a pretty straightforward chapter that if you've read through it you should be able to understand it. However, I would like to highlight and um, explain some of the key concepts and definitions here to help clarify them a bit. So I quickly want to talk about monoculture. Now, monoculture is not a natural thing. It's not something that usually occurs in the natural environment. Nature is extremely diverse. There's always species interacting, organisms interacting, and because of this interaction, they actually strengthen each other and they have um, a role that they play on each other's life cycles. For example, birds might eat fruits from a tree, ingest the seeds and spread the seeds to a different environment so that the seeds can sprout there and grow into new trees. Now, a monoculture is a system where there's only one species at a given time. For example, a cornfield is a monoculture and this system actually has a lot of negative um, impacts on the environment. Um, pests become a problem in monocultures. In summary, a monoculture is basically a system where there's low biodiversity. Um, in natural ecosystems, there's always high biodiversity and biodiversity just means that there's a lot of organisms interacting with each other. So monoculture, low biodiversity, natural ecosystems, high biodiversity. So just a quick note on the greenhouse effect. This effect is what makes the Earth's environment suitable to life. Without it, there won't be any life on Earth. Earth would be uninhabitable. The temperatures would be frigid. So this is a very necessary effect um, for life. It just has got a very negative, bad rep from all the media. Um, but the problem is with all things is that there needs to be a balance. Too much of this effect will lead to global warming and temperatures will increase uh, quite dramatically. Uh, but if this effect was not present, temperatures would drop to a temperature that would be too cold for life on planet Earth. So carbon dioxide is very necessary. Um, yes, there is too much carbon dioxide in the environment at present because of um, cars we drive and factories that pollute the air with an excess of carbon dioxide. However, there needs to be carbon dioxide in the environment. Another process that I quickly want to outline that I think is quite important is eutrophication. And this is the process by which pollutants, and I'm going to call it pollutants because uh, they should not be um, in that environment. For example, fertilizers or sewage get into a water system and once they're in the water system, they cause growth of bacteria which use up all the oxygen in the water and this causes the other organisms such as fish and uh, water plants to die. This whole process is called eutrophication. Uh, make sure that you're familiar with it and that you understand how this works. I quickly also want to clarify the term biodegradable. Biodegradable means that an object is able to decompose back into an organic form. Um, so when we say an object is non-biodegradable, it means that it won't break down. Decomposers can't break it down and incorporate the elements back into the environment. Alright, so this was just a very quick recap and clarification on some of the things in this chapter. If you don't understand this chapter, try reading it again, summarizing it, make diagrams and sketches of processes. These are imperative in um, the study of biology so that you can understand it. Um, it's always better to try and simplify things and break them down um, than try to get too complicated. So make sure you understand the basic terminology and then you can work on understanding the processes. Anyways, good luck with this chapter, good luck with the studying, go and get those good marks. Also, just a quick note, there are going to be more biology videos coming out. We're going to be doing a lot of exam questions, working through them in the video so that you guys can see how to answer exam questions and tests and those kind of things. So stay tuned.